Hi, my name is Taj Mohammed. I'm a senior support escalation engineer at Microsoft. I work with System Center 2012 Configuration Manager Support Team. The topic of this presentation is managing workgroup clients with uh, System Center 2012 Configuration Manager. And this is going to be the part one of the presentation. And the part two is going to cover the workgroup clients with um, HTTPS site system. So this is going to focus on HTTP and uh, we'll call the part two on HTTPS site systems. The objective of this presentation, so, so, so there are going to be two presentations, two videos, one part one and another part two. So, so the objective of this presentation is limitations of worker clients, understand how site assignment works for worker clients, installing configuration manager client on workgroup machines, Software deployment requirements for workgroup clients. We'll see what is that we need to set up for the software deployment to work for this workgroup machines. And we'll definitely see a demo for each of these. We'll see how the site assignment works and we'll install a client. And then uh, we'll look at some of the logs which are uh, useful when we are trying to understand the communication uh, between the workgroup clients and the management point. So if, to start with the uh, so we'll look at the limitations here. So it's it's limited in a way where you cannot use Active Directory to locate management points. It has to rely on DNS, WINS, or another management point. So we are going to focus on DNS here. Um, so it cannot use Active Directory since it's in work group. And since global roaming feature also requires Active Directory, that will also not work. Active Directory discovery methods cannot discover computers in work groups. So you cannot use Active Directory discovery, dis discovery method to discover computers in work group. That's understood. You cannot deploy software to users of work group computers. We don't under identify those users, so we cannot deploy those. Um, we, we cannot deploy software to that, those users. You cannot use a client push installation method to install the client on workgroup computers. Workgroup clients cannot use Kerberos for authentications, so you might require manual um, approval. So with the default setting, um, the default setting is the default setting setting only allows the uh, automatic approval of the domain clients, not the workgroup clients. So you need to either change that setting or um, uh, approve each and every workgroup client manually. A workgroup client cannot be configured at the distribution point uh, because the requirement uh, for the distribution point role installation is a domain join machine. Site assignment, after the client is installed, it must join a configuration manager primary site before it can be managed. The site that a client joins is referred to as its assigned site. So it has to be a primary site. You cannot assign the client to a CAS, that's a central administration site, and a secondary site. It has to be a primary site, and it, it needs to be assigned. A client is considered and managed when it is installed but not assigned to a site, or is assigned to a site but cannot communicate with the management point. So how the site assignment works for workgroup clients. So that's in the next slide. It's manual versus auto assignment. Auto assignment will not work for workgroup clients because um, auto assignment usually happens if you have Active Directory and if the site is published to Active Directory. So since that's not happening, you cannot assign the clients to, um, you cannot do an auto assignment on the clients. So to manually assign the workgroup clients, um, so you need to rely on manual assignment. So it has to be a manual installation with the uh, SMS site code as an installation property then equal to the site code of the site. And then the next thing is when you when the site is when the client is assigned to a site, the next thing is to know the management point information. So to know that information, we have two options. One is you manually specify the management point as well when you install the site, or if you want to rely on the um, DNS to get that information, you can do that. Uh, so DNS DNS must have the information of the management point published. So that happens by default, uh, the site publishes to the DNS, to its domain uh, under, under, under the 
DNS domain, the DNS, DNS zone which belongs to its domain, like for example in this case, cm.com is the Active Directory domain name and that is the name of the DNS zone as well, so it publishes the information, um, the site information, the management point information to that zone. So if you want the client to query a particular DNS zone and get this information, then you have to specify that using the DNS um, suffix tropical client installation property. Client approval, as I was saying, um, by default, the first option, which is automatically approved, computers and trusted domains are selected, and that will not work for, work for the workgroup machines. And if you want to still maintain that option, and uh, approve the workgroup clients and you have to do it manually or what you can do is you can change the setting which is not recommended but if you want the clients the workgroup clients to automatically get approved you can select the third option which is um, highlighted in the screenshot deploying software to workgroup clients you in order to deploy the software to the workgroup clients you you must have the network access account set up uh, network access account is the account which is used when the client connects to the distribution point. So during the connection, it has to get authenticated. Um, so the account used for authentication connection to this particular share um, on the distribution point URL is the network access account. So network access account will be a domain user account and this work group machine can use that account to connect to a distribution point content location. If the boundaries and boundary groups are configured properly, clients can automatically locate distribution points. If the boundaries are set up and the boundary groups are set up for the content location, the work group clients can definitely use those and then locate their distribution points. And if let's say, if the boundaries are not set up and the boundary groups are not set up, the work group clients are, for that matter, the domain joint clients can also get the distribution point. But for that, you have to um, set up your deployments um, to allow the download of the content when the clients fall under the slow or unreliable network boundary. So any boundary which is not set up is will be considered as a slow boundary or an unreliable boundary. So let's say for example you have a subnet which is not added to the boundaries. It means that this subnet is a slow boundary for um, configuration manager. So any client connecting from this boundary will be considered as a slow LAN client or an unreliable network client. So they will be able to, they will still be able to download the software, but you need to have this option selected, which is not selected by default when you create the deployment. So it applies to a legacy software deployment. It applies to the application deployments. It also applies to the software update deployments. So now we'll um, look at the demo. All right, so I have a primary site here. So just want to show you the console here and show you a few things before we get into the demo and before we get into the installation of the client. So I don't have any boundaries set up here, any boundary groups uh, first. And then let me show you the properties of the site so that you get an idea about the exact settings I have. So the client computer communication is um, is the tab which where, where you can set up your HTTP and HTTPS communication. So this is the default setting. I haven't made any change here. And uh, I show you the hierarchy settings here. So that, this will have your client approval setting, which I was trying to show in the presentation. So this is set up to automatically approve only the domain clients. So this is not set up to approve the workgroup clients. So I'll leave that option as it is so that we can approve the client manually. So I have a um, Windows 7 client machine here, which is in workgroup. I'll quickly show you the system properties here. So this is in workgroup and the name of the machine is CM12 min 7. And this is configured to use DNS. And another thing which I would 
I'd like to show you here is it doesn't have um, the 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 FQDN configured. So, which means the full computer name is still the NetBIOS name. I haven't specified any DNS suffix. So, specifying the DNS suffix here will actually help. Um, it's, it's not a it's not mandatory it's not a requirement you you don't have to specify but if you specify what happens is you don't have to use the dns suffix switch um, during the client installation so you don't have to use the dns suffix client installation property during the uh, installation of the client but that's that's the only thing but if you don't specify the dns suffix here we can ins still install it for, uh, using the dns suffix switch so let me close this. All right. So what I have done on this is I show you. So this is my CM12 PRI um, is the name of the site server where my primary site is running. And the site code is PRI. So that's the reason why it's SMS underscore PRI. So I have this client directory here. So I can just I can just run the setup from here, like just double click on ccm setup.exe and it will initiate the installation. But what will happen with that is it will take the default uh, installation property as SMS site code equal to auto. Uh, the site code will be taken as auto, which means it will depend on Active Directory to locate the site information. So since this is a workgroup client, um, that's not going to help. It might help if it's a domain client. So that's one thing we are to uh, mention here. So what I have done is I have copied this client folder locally on my C drive here. You don't have to, cap I mean, you don't have to copy it. You can just run the maybe map a network drive and run the installation um, from the map drive. So I have copied the folder locally and I'm going to run the installation from there. So CM setup SMS side code equal to PRI. I can run the installation without DNS suffix, but what will happen eventually is it will not be able to locate the management point information. So I'll, I'll not do that. So I'll go ahead and specify DNS suffix here equal to cm.com. That's fine. Okay, before we run this, I want to show you the domain controller. So the reason we are looking at this is we want to see the DNS and we want to see where the site information is published. So go to the forward lookup zone, cm.com is the name of the domain, TCP. So this is where it is. So this particular record is called a service record or SRV in chart. So this is the record which is required um, to be present in DNS if you want the clients to locate the management point information. Now you may ask, how will the client know about the management point from this particular record? So look at this, cm12pri.cm.com. So that's the name of the management point. And uh, one other piece of information which is useful here is the AT. AT is the port number, um, which is a HTTP MP. And if it's HTTP SMP, then it will actually have the 443. And the client actually needs to know, get, needs to know this information um and uh, do, do, when, when it when it uh, when it gets this information it also gets the information that the client the the mp is running on port 80 so if it is running on 443 then the client will try to use https communication and talk to the management point so that's the reason why this piece of information is important here so we can so the benefit of using dns suffix is we are 
uh, relying on DNS to give us the information about the management point and the port on which the management point is running. So let's go ahead and run this. So when we run the installation, so there are a couple of logs which we can check uh, if you're not aware. Yeah, Windows CCM setup folder here. So I can say that there's some activity in the log here. So it's um, copying or downloading the prerequisite files. And of course we have the prerequisite files copied to um, the local drive. I want to show you one information which would be helpful at this stage. SMS site code. All right, there it is. So whatever command line you have, um, you have run, you can look at that in the CCM setup.log just to verify if that's the one which was run. Let's say you're looking at one of the clients and you want to know what was the command line properties or the, what were the CCM um, uh, client installation properties used during the installation. You can actually come to the log and look at these um, properties here. All right, so we need to just wait for the installation to complete here. So once the installation is completed, we can uh, look at the CCM logs. So under CCM logs, I would be interested in location services. That's very important. And uh, the reason why this is important is it actually tells you that if it can, if it has uh, located the management point from the DNS or not, or from where it is actually getting the information of the DNS, or it has received any DNS information, uh, management point information here. So if you look at this, it clearly tells us that attempting to retrieve local MPs from DNS, attempting to retrieve default management points from DNS, and this is the DNS uh, uh, management point name uh, listed here, and the port number as i said is important port 80 is the port on which the management point is running so this is the piece of information which is very very crucial for the client communication to happen so while working with uh, many customers we realize that um, most of the times when we work on the client communication issues when we look at the location services log we don't see any uh, management point listed in the log which tells us that the management point um, is not present in the DNS, information is not present in the DNS, or it's not um, in normal domain scenario, the MMP information is not published in AD. So you have to, uh, so that, that will tell you that um, there's a problem there. So this 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 looks good to me. Uh, the, I have the management point information in the location services log. I'm, um, I'm happy with that. Uh, the next thing is, looking at the client ID manager startup log. So this is again, very, very important log. The reason is it tells, it shows you the client registration information. The first thing which happens before the client can download the policies and uh, starts, starts communicating with the uh, configuration manager site with the management point is the client should get registered. And I can see that registration task client is not registered, client is registered or says, so with this information, with this piece of information in the log, I should be able to see that machine, uh, see this machine in the console. So let's go to that set and compliance here. And there it is. So we have CM12 Win7 machine listed. Um, client sh shows as yes, site code PRI, but it's not approved. So what is the impact of the client being not approved? Let's see. Let's go back to the client again. And um, one important log is the policy agent log. So, so this is the log. I'll, I'll come back to this log uh, while we're looking at that. I want to open the configuration manager applet which uh, got installed in the client installation. And you see this. There are just two actions enabled here machine policy retrieval, user policy retrieval. 
there, there, there should be a couple of more actions um, listed here, which we are not seeing. So those actions get enabled through the policies which the client receives from management point. And uh, looking at this, we can say the policies are not getting downloaded um, from the management point. So why will that happen? Because the client is not approved. So let's go and um, approve the client manually. So to do that, right click on the machine and say approve. So you're about to approve, yes. All right, so what we do on the client, we can just wait for the client to refresh that information or we can just stop the SMS agent host service. If you want to do it from the command prompt, stop CCM exec is the name of the service. So the service got started. Go back here, and um, we can just wait for the policy retrieval to happen again. And uh, I can just run this, and uh, all right, we can see the policy is getting downloaded here, and they are getting compiled. So this this looks definitely better now. I can go back here to the configuration manager of applet and see this. So you have all the actions enabled and um, populated with um, different actions. So the client looks functional now. How, so what happens on the server? So, okay, so it is approved and um, so we should be able to see the um, inventory, the hardware inventory, software inventory, they're all enabled by default. So we should have that information coming in. Um, and and while we are looking at that, so a few things which you want to see, okay, so it's still not there. We can just wait for that. So in the meantime, uh, on the server side, this log, MP registration manager will be helpful. So this is this is the log a few minutes back the client got registered. And uh, we, we want to see this record in the MP registration manager that DDR written to so there's an RDR file. This is where the registration happens. That's, that's the initial thing which happens. And then once the client gets registered, so during so during the registration process, we'll see the entries in this log. And if you're not seeing any entries, then there is a client communication issue that the client cannot access the management point. And there, that's that's uh, something which you need to look at, that the why client is um, not able to talk to the management point and what kind of communication issues it has. But we must see the entry here. So if you're seeing the entry, we're good. And that's when the client shows up in the console, as I said. But that's a management point log. The location of the log is program files, SMS underscore CCM logs folder. So there is another log, uh, which I want to show you here as MP underscore DDR. So there, is, there must be an entry in this log as well. And that will be a little bit later of the, after the registration. So I guess uh, this is where it is. CM twelve and seven. There was one thirty, just right after the registration happened. It sent the heartbeat discovery, and that's when we'll see start seeing this information here. So if you go to the properties of CM twelve and seven, so you have this client registration information, and then the heartbeat discovery. So both those times you can actually match it with this agent time here. So this is your registration time. What we have seen in the log. And the heartbeat discovery is the latest at 135. And there was another heartbeat discovery which came in. Um, that's the reason why it's showing the 135 as the time there. So that that so that's about the installation of the work group client. And uh, so many customers ask this question that what about the ports which needs to be open for the work group clients, especially when the clients are in DMZ, you have an isolated forest or a um, 
number of workgroup clients and DMZ network, and you have a site running in the intranet. So what all it needs is a port 80, and if you have the port 80 allowed, then it should work fine because MP works and port 80 or port 443, of course, if the site system is running um, on HTTPS. So in this case, in this scenario, I would say just the port 80 is the requirement for the clients to communicate. Management point, get the policies, upload the inventory, download any application or any policies and work with system center 2012 configuration manager site. Okay, so one other thing which I wanted to show you here is the application or the software deployment requirements. As I said in the presentation, um, one is uh, you need to make sure that you have a network access account set up and this is the place where you can set up the network access account so if you look at the screen i have cm administrator that's my domain administrator set up as network access account but there is no requirement um, to use the domain administrator or administrator account you can just use a domain user account which has access to the content share or any by default any domain user account the normal domain user account must have access to the content so you can just use the domain user account there and uh, let's move on here to to the software library and this is the sample application i have it's configuration manager toolkit so the other thing which is very important if you don't have any boundaries set up so as i was showing you let me go back here again so i don't have any boundaries and uh, of course any boundary group set up here so in that case it becomes important how you set up your application um, content download setting so this is the deployment type properties and you have the content tab here and then so if this is the default option do not download content for slow or unreliable network so which one is a slow or unreliable network any boundary which is not set up in configuration manager will be um, slow will be considered as a slow or unreliable network now for example you have a subnet 192.168.1.0 if it is not added to configuration manager site, then it is a slow, it's, it's considered as a slow subnet. So any client which is part of this subnet, when it tries to access the content of this application, it will not be accessible if this option is selected. So we need to select this option. So basically, um, if the client doesn't fall under the boundaries, and if you still want to allow the content download for this client, you need to select this option. This applies to your legacy software deployment, the new application deployment method, and of course the software deployments as well. So, so that is the setting which is required. And let's go ahead and create a deployment. And before that, let's make sure that we have a collection where the machine is added so I have a work group clients collection here and uh, CM12 and San is our work group client which is present there I want to go ahead and create the deployment now just create Let's target the deployment to group clients so I'll just make it required so that it gets installed on its own of course as soon as possible okay so with the default options just that I made it required and other than that all the options were set to default so we have a deployment created, which means a policy gets created in the background. And we can look at the policy PV and other logs for more information. 
Well, let's go back to the client here and uh, initiate the machine policy, expecting that the policy is created by now. Run now, and then this is the log, policy agent log, and I don't see it has retrieved any new policy recently. I downloaded a new policy, maybe this matter of time, and uh, there it is. So I could see some of the uh, downloads happening and compiling happening, expecting that it's the same policy. Let's see. It hasn't showed up here yet. downloading and installing software so we expect that the download to happen automatically um, without any content access issues because we have a network access account set up and in case if you get into um, an issue where the download is stuck or um, it's not able to download the content there could be multiple reasons, but few very quickly I want to show you here. And you can look at these logs to get some idea about what's happening. So one is um, Content Transfer Manager. So I expect that um, the download happens here and this is the URL you're trying to access and I was able to access it fine there's no no issues here um, and if, if you get into any issues you should be looking at this log and see if there's any error during the download and uh, one other log which would help of course is content access log so look at this log see if you have any issues so it also shows you the information of the the cache uh, CCM cache folder and um, I, I don't see any any issues with the download here so anyway so the installation happened successfully so these are a couple of logs which you could um, look at to understand uh, what's happening and of course one important thing um, finally is um, I'd be interested to see and for example this one here um, this so this this entry you're seeing here so whenever there is a application getting installed whenever there is a content being downloaded we should always see a distribution point name and the url listed in the location services log so if you don't see the url here then there is a problem that the client did not get the distribution point location information from the management point so you need to look at um, the deployment management deployment type setting the one which we did and uh, you are, if you're using boundaries, then you make sure that boundaries, the, the boundary is added. So those are things you should be looking at when you don't see the distribution point information. So these are a couple of logs which will help in uh, troubleshooting um, the content download and application deployment issues. Um, of course, on a domain client and also on a worker client. All right, this brings me into the presentation of part one. Uh, thank you for watching.